so this video, I just wanted to discuss the relationship between the first derivative, second derivative, and the original function. And I feel like using the trig functions are the best to show this. So I graph the original function sine x over here, the derivative of that cosine x over here, and the second derivative of sine x, or negative sine x over here. And I first want to look at the relationship between sine x and cosine x, or the, for the original function and the derivative. So the first thing we should notice is that when the derivative is positive, so from 0 to pi over 2, the original function is increasing or has positive slopes. So from 0 to pi over 2, the function from 0 to pi over 2 is increasing or has positive slopes. Again, from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, the derivative is negative. So from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, the derivative is negative and again over here if we look at slopes from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 notice that they're all negative and that the function is decreasing the entire way from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 so in this part we can say it is decreasing and it has negative slopes and again if we look at from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi the first derivative is positive again and notice that here from 3 pi over 2 pi, the slopes are positive and the function is increasing. Notice that it's going up like that. So from here to here, we can say that it is increasing and it has positive slopes. So the derivative or the sign of the derivative can tell us whether the function at that, at that specific region is increasing or decreasing and whether the slopes are positive or negative. So now the next thing I want to look at are the maxes and mins on the original function. So in general, a max or a min occurs when the derivative of a function equals zero, right? So when you take the derivative of sine x, we get cosine x, and cosine x equals zero at this spot right here for pi over two. Notice that at pi over two, that there's a maximum on the original function sine of x, and that's because to the left of pi over two, if you do the number line test at pi over two right here, the left of pi over 2, the cosine graph is positive, so it has an upsloping line. And to the right of pi over 2, it has a negative. Its derivative is negative, so it's a downsloping line. The number line test shows it kind of like a mountain, right? So at pi over 2, that would be a maximum. And voila, on the original function at pi over 2, there is a maximum. And again, the derivative equals 0 at 3 pi over 2. And notice at 3 pi over 2, there is a minimum. And this makes sense. Because at 3 pi over 2, if we take the values right of it, the function, if we take the values sorry, left of it, the functions are negative, right? The derivative is negative. We take a point left of 3 pi over 2, so the slope is going down. And if you take a point right of 3 pi over 2, it, it's positive, so it's going up. This looks like a V or a valley, so 3 pi over since so 3 pi over 2 on the original function would be a minimum. So again, when the derivative of the function is set to zero and you solve for that x coordinate, that x coordinate on the original function would be a max or a min. And we prove that by using pi over 2 here and 3 pi over 2 here. At pi over 2, the derivative is equal to zero and there's a max on the original function. At 3 pi over 2, there's uh, the derivative is again zero and there's a minimum at 3 pi over 2 over here. So the next function, the next relationship I want to look at is the relationship between the original function and the second derivative uh, of double prime x equals negative sine x. And the second derivative is mo mo mostly has to do with concavity and points of inflection. So again, look, if we take the values that from 0 to pi, that the second derivative is negative, right? As negative values from 0 to pi. And from 0 to pi over here, the the original function f of x equals sine of x is concave down, right? It's like a dome. And from pi to 2 pi, the second derivative is positive. And from pi to 2 pi over here, the, the original function is concave up. So basically, if the second derivative is negative, then the function over a region of the second derivative is negative, then the function, the original function for that region is concave, concave down. And if the second derivative for a region is positive, the original function is concave up as seen by this u-shape. But we get another thing from the second derivative, that's point of inflections. So when we set the second derivative equal to zero, so that, that's at this point, pi, we can see that the concavity changes from, at the left of, left of pi, we have, a, we have a negative concavity, right? 
and right of pi, we have a positive concavity. So at pi, there is a POI or a point of inflection. And notice that that same point in the original function, f of x equals sine of x, at pi, the concavity changes, right? Because over here, we have a negative concavity. And over here, we have a positive concavity. So at pi, the concavity changes. So again, the relationship between the f double prime and the f, f and the original function f of x is that the f double prime shows us the actual shape or the concavity of the original function. If over a region the second derivative gives us a negative value, that we, that means we know that the original function over that region will be concave down. If the second derivative gives us a positive value, we know over that region the original function has a concave up, and we notice that since it's negative over here from zero to pi, it is concave down from zero to pi, right? It's a dome. And since it's positive from zero to two pi, from pi to two pi, it is concave up from pi to two pi. So combining the what we know from the first derivative and the second derivative, we can actually sketch f of x, and that is called curve sketching. So the last relationship is between f prime x and f double prime x, and that's basically the same relationship between f of x and f f prime x. Notice that when f double prime x equals zero, that at that point there is either a min or a max. So notice that at pi, f double prime x equals zero, but and at pi for the first derivative there is a minimum. So that's it, and these that is, that are the relationship between the first derivative the second derivative, and the original function. Thank you guys for watching, and please comment and subscribe below.